This video is an introduction to the tarantula curve. I'm going to tell you how to use it, why it's important, and what it's good for. My name is Tyler Lay. I'm a professor in civil engineering, and I am obsessed with concrete. And a special thanks to Dan Cook and Ashkin Gazita for their help on this work. The tarantula curve, what is it? Really simply put, it's a way to design your aggregates to make your concrete more workable. When you look at a concrete mixture, over 70% of the volume is made out of aggregates. 70%. That means if you don't pay attention to your aggregates, you have very little chance to get your concrete mixture workable and right. Here's a picture of it. Here's what it's all about. There's a bunch of other videos where I've talked about it. Really simply put, there's three parts to the tarantula curve. You plot your si your sieve size versus percent retained down here. You, pr you plot the amount of coarse sand you have. That's the number eight through the number 30. You plot the amount of fine sand you have, the number 30 through the number 200. And you see if they fall in these boxes or in, in these ranges. If you do, your concrete should increase in workability. That's a good thing. If you don't, then these boundaries will tell you what will happen to your concrete because bad things will start to happen. It looks a little scary, but it's not hard. And there's spreadsheets and three other videos that I've posted all about the tarantula curve. And I'm gonna link to them in the description below. So how did we get this? Well, we systematically did hundreds and hundreds of concrete mixtures with lots of different types of aggregates, different water cement ratios, all kinds of stuff. And we've summarized all this on this website, tarantulacurve.com, or you can search on Google, YouTube tarantula curve, or you can look in this description below and I'll have a number of videos that you can go watch about it. So is it good enough to just be within the tarantula curve? If I'm in the tarantula curve, am I guaranteed to have a great concrete mixture? And sadly, the answer is no. There's two other parameters. You have to get your paste content right and you have to get your aggregate shape right. Well, what's paste content? Paste is your binder plus your water plus your air. You don't want to have too much and you don't want to have too little. You'd say, well, how do I know? Well, I have a mix design procedure that gives you a good first guess. I'm going to link to it in the description below. However, we don't want paste because it's the most costly. It's the least sustainable concrete ingredient and has the biggest impact on our concrete's durability. How do I know how much paste to use? I'm going to link to a good first guess in the description below, but a lot of times you just have to trial batch your concrete and see. So why would you do this? Well, if you reduce your paste, you can reduce your cost. You can improve your durability. You can improve your sustainability and you can improve your strength. You can do all four of these things simultaneously. So what about strength? Man, I have done tons and tons and tons, tons of experiments. Strength is, does not have a lot to do with aggregates. Some, but not a lot. It's mainly about water to cement ratio, at least in the strength ranges that we're typically interested in. I'm showing you some examples here. Lots of data where we can get great strengths at seven days with very, very low cementitious content very low binder content. But aggregate shape, that can be a big deal. I'm showing three examples here. The one on the left has the lowest water demand and it's cubicle type rocks. The one in the middle is a little bit more flat and elongated and the one on the right, the one that's very flat and very elongated, it has high amounts of water demand. I suggest you just pick these things up and look at them and you can start to train your eye. You want rectangular or cubicle type of rock. And it doesn't matter that much about how smooth it is. At least with most concrete mixtures, it doesn't matter that much. How do you measure this? Let's say you're like me and you love to measure stuff. You can look at this test method, ASTM D4791. And what it does is it measures the flatness and elongation of the particles. It measures the minimum dimension to the maximum dimension of a single aggregate. It will tell you that you have to first sieve it and then go through and look at each one of the sieve analysis, sieve sizes um, equally. I don't think that's important. 
I think you can get away with using just a half inch sieve size. So if you sieve just the half inch and then you go and you look at the long dimension to the short dimension, that's your flatness ratio. And you want less than 15% of your aggregates to have a flatness ratio less than one to three. In summary, you can go to this website, tarantulacurve.com, look up YouTube on Google, tarantula curve. I've linked to videos below. Hey, I hope you like this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If you do, give me a thumbs up. Let me know, what are your concerns about the tarantula curve? What are you worried about? And subscribe to my channel. Take care, everybody. Bye.